Welcome. You're listening to Women's Health and Beyond with Dr. David Goslin, the only podcast for women providing a physician's point of view on everything relating to women's health, sexual medicine, and cosmetic gynecology. Get ready to discover the latest and hottest topics in women's health and how they relate to you. Hey everyone, this is Dr. David Goslin. We are here for Women's Health and Beyond, my podcast. I have today with us, Emily Gamliel. She's a cosmetic nurse who specializes in facial aesthetics, and she's just wrapping up her nurse nursing practitioner's degree. So I'm giving you a virtual hand clap. Congratulations. Um, so I want to welcome you to the show because we want to talk about fillers and Botox and everything aesthetically related and learn a little bit about you and what you're doing. So welcome to the show, Emily. Thank you. Thank so how long have you been in the aesthetic field now? So I've been in the aesthetic field for about seven years now. And uh, I absolutely love it. Um, definitely think that one must have an aesthetic eye to be in this type of field. True. Um, takes a lot more than just injecting. It's a lot of assessment that goes into this uh, type of field. And uh, it's amazing. It's, I love it. All right. Well, let's get into it then. So let's start with Botox. Why don't you give us a little bit, maybe a quick summary of what is Botox and how long does it last and is it safe? And, and then we'll get into some of the uses. So uh, Botox is a neurotoxin. Um, there are other brand names. There are other names um, such as Dysport or Xeomin. And uh, they're all uh, neurotoxins, which is basically a drug that weakens or paralyzes the muscle. Mm -hmm. And as a cosmetic treatment, these Botox injections can reduce the appearance of skin wrinkles. They can also help treat medical conditions such as migraines, hyperhidrosis, which is excessive sweating and TMJ. And the effects are temporary lasting about three to four months. Oh, great. So you can get both a medical and aesthetic benefit from these. Yes. Well, let's get into the aesthetics since that's important to us. Uh, so the FDA has approved Botox for certain treatments. And I know that we use them for FDA recommended treatments, but we also use it for non FDA approved treatments that is commonplace and very safe. So why don't we tell us about first the FDA treatments that it's approved from and then what do you use it that's outside of that. So uh, for a long time, believe it or not, for aesthetic purposes, it was only um, approved for the frown lines between the brows. And uh, recently the FDA has approved it for the frontalis muscle, which is the forehead, um, horizontal lines on the forehead and now crow's feet. So basically everything in the upper face. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so just so everybody knows, and when you have a patient who comes in, how do you do your Botox consultation? Do they tell you or do you offer them a mirror and you kind of walk through what they want to gain from, from your consultation? And then how do you decide how much to use and what areas you should focus on? So I typically like to see and find out what bothers the patient. I always give them a mirror and I ask them to tell me what it is that bothers them. Most of the time, um, I do have to educate these, the patients um, because some may think that Botox is a, a line eraser and it's not. Botox is best used as a preventative measure. And uh, what a lot, of, uh, a lot of the patients don't understand is that it requires maintenance. You can't just do it once and then just forget about it. It's kind of like coloring your roots. You just gotta keep coming back. And over time, that muscle gets relaxed and the contractions of the muscles aren't there. And that's when the lines uh, over time soften up. Gotcha. And that, and that applies for the whole entire face, not just the upper of face. Of course, the whole face. So I like to see what bothers the patient after they tell me what, you know, what they are um, bothered by. 
I will um, then give them my opinion and what I think. And uh, sometimes, well, most often I will let them know what I suggest. Um, a lot of people just, you know, they don't know and they wanna be educated. They wanna, they want someone professional who does this to let them know what they need or what they think they need. And at least in the areas I practice and I do injectables also, I think setting the expectations and, and being realistic with the patient is very important as well. Exactly, that is, I agree 100%, very important. Um, oftentimes people do have unrealistic expectations, which is where the education comes in um, and explaining to them that at some point, if those wrinkles are too deep, the, the Botox will help prevent them from getting worse. And okay. that is why it's best to start earlier. So start early before the, the wrinkles really get deep. Mm -hmm. So ideally, you probably say late 20s, mid 20s, early 30s, around that time period. About, about late 20s, I would say, early okay. 30s. Okay. And so you talked about the FDA approved treatments for Botox. So the lines on your forehead, the crow's feet on the side of your eyes, and as well as we call them the 11s or the, the mid portion in, in between your eyebrows. But tell me, I want to know now about some of the other treatments. Maybe you can elaborate on what other uses you use Botox aesthetically, maybe mid face or lower face. I know, for example, tell us about the bunny lines and things like that. So uh, there are different places uh, to use Botox in the face. Uh, bunny lines, as you mentioned, is one of them. Uh, there's also what's called um, Botox in the DAO muscle, which uh, helps lift those the corners of the mouth. A lot of women kind of start looking sad. Um, and then also a very, uh, very, very effective treatment is for those with what's called a gummy smile. So a lot of women, um, when they smile, you could see their gums. And so we'll inject um, right in that area above the lip just to kind of prevent that, the gum from showing. Oh, that's great. So yeah. bunny, bunny line, so everybody knows, is that little wrink, those little wrinkly appearances on the upper part of your nose when you're smiling or frowning. And the gummy smile, that's a good one. That's a really good one. Another really good one is uh, to smooth out the chin. A lot of women have get that cobblestone skin on the chin. It's called an orange peel. Yes, and, at the uh, bottom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a really nice one. And so in your experience, because we talk about other types of neurotoxins such as Dysport, Dysport's gaining more and more popularity. Tell us what, what differentiates, when do you choose, or, or is there a reason to choose this board over Botox, or what do you prefer working with? Um, I don't think that one's better than the other, per se. Um, this board does have a, a faster, a quicker onset. So women who come in and they need an immediate effect, maybe they have an event, you know, in two or three days, they want it to work faster. Um, I would choose this board for them. Um, otherwise, you know, they all have the same um, action, uh, same mechanism, um, and they all work the, about the same. Uh, some patients obviously have their preference, kind of like one would prefer Colgate over Crest or, or vice versa. Uh, I just kind of go with what the patient asks for. Sure, sure. So let me ask you another question. Um, as far as Botox and Dysport are concerned, um, are there any, when, you do, when you're doing the procedure, are you using numbing cream? Is it painful? What's the downtime like? What can they expect? How fast does it kick in? So a very tiny needle is used. I don't find that numbing is necessary, honestly. It's such a, a quick procedure. Um, I, I'm often told that I have a light hand, so. Um, I really haven't, um, very, very rarely does, does somebody ask for, you know, to be numbed, but I don't find that it's necessary. Okay. And then how quickly can you see results with Botox versus Dysport? Dysport's usually about three days later. With Botox, it's about one to two weeks. 
two weeks is where you'd see the full effect. Okay. So you also meant, so we, we covered some, some good treatments aesthetically for facial aesthetics from the mid face, lower face and upper face. Um, and you briefly mentioned at the very start that Botox has been used for some medical indications. Um, are you doing migraine inject Botox injections for migraines yourself? I do not. I actually recommend that uh, patients suffering from migraines should go to a neurologist for that. I agree. I totally agree with that. Since migraines can be so complicated, they can have an aura without an aura. There's so many issues. And you mentioned for hyperhidrosis, so excessive sweating. And some people have excessive sweating in the palms of their hands or in their armpits or axillary regions, even in their genital areas. Is Botox really effective to control that? Uh, from my experience, it is. I have done uh, Botox in the armpits for that. And um, the feedback I've gotten is that it lasts about six months, which is pretty amazing. And you just stop sweating or just decreases the amount of sweating? Decreases it significantly. Got, gotcha. Well, that sounds really interesting. I mean, important because many of us suffer from excessive sweating. Anything else we should know about Botox? Um, other than that, it's great. And I use it. And I think everyone who would like to just kind of stay looking youthful. Me. <laughs> All of I, us. I, I, I actually use it as well. And I've been using it for a little while. And I actually like having it. I don't know. You know I'm scared not to have it now. <laughs> So let's get into fillers. I mean, fillers is much bigger territory, um, a lot of different kinds of fillers and companies, and so many different uses for fillers. So let's just get in. What's, what's the basics? I mean, there's so many different kinds, but is there like a basic building block that fillers work off of? So uh, dermal fillers or injectable fillers are most, uh, most often are made up of hyaluronic acid. Hyaluronic acid is a type of sugar that is naturally found in our skin and our connective tissues um, and our joints. And uh, fillers typically are injected into the skin to fill in sunken areas, um, smooth out wrinkles, um, some fine lines, and just mostly add volume and plumpness. So just so everybody understands, when we're talking about volume, what happens is as we age, whether it's aesthetically in the face or in other parts of our body, we actually lose fat volume, fat pads, and we start having that sunken look Emily's referring to. <clears throat> and, and that goes for the face. And in my area, it goes for uh, the labia majora, so genitally as well. So when you decide to use a filler, why choose one filler over another? Is there a difference in how well it moves or the softness of it, the density? How do you choose? So there are, um, you know, multitude of, of different types um, with a different density um, uh, and some are more elastic than others. It just would depend on the type of, uh, of wrinkle. Uh, some fillers are better suited for those with fine lines as the, the HA is finer uh, in the way that it is um, made up. Um, and then there are areas in the face where uh, the injection is a deeper injection where you almost wanna lift the skin and create somewhat of a, of a non-surgical facelift. And that's where you, I would choose a much thicker type of filler meant to hold. Gotcha. So I know there's so many indications aesthetically to use fillers. If, I, if you were to choose one area that to you makes the biggest difference using fillers, what would it be? Area on the face? Yeah. Uh, definitely the mid face, the cheek area, just because a lot of our, um, a lot of the, uh, most patients concerns involve uh, the mid face. So when we lose volume in our cheeks, that's when we start seeing those nasal folds, which are those lines around our mouth. Um, our under eye area starts to get sunken, uh, sunken in. 
So you definitely want to start with your mid face and then kind of work all around. So you mean to tell me if I add volume to my cheeks, I'm going to have better cheek definition, but I'm also going to pull up and therefore we're going to decrease the intensity of the nasal labial folds and make them look almost gone. Yes, definitely with the right amount, the right dose, definitely. So there you go, guys mid face fillers, most important area. What about the hottest thing I, that I think of, but you can correct me if I'm wrong, is everybody wants their lips done these days. So I, tell me about that. So you cut out a little bit. What was the last thing you said? I said, everybody, I, I feel like everybody today wants their lips done. Yes, yes. So, and that seems to have gained a lot of popularity. So tell me what people are looking for. What do you like to use for lips? And how do you like to approach them? So uh, you either have, what I notice, I either see patients who, uh, and, and that's usually the younger, um, younger patients, they want very, very big lips, full lips. They want them as big as possible. They'll often come back a couple of weeks later wanting more. For those patients, obviously, I'll go with a filler that's a little uh, thicker and give them that plump look that they want to achieve. Um, and then you have those that are a bit older that don't want to look overly done and just want to have a little bit of their youth, you know, restored. Um, they just want their lips a little fuller, but they don't want anyone to know. And that's when I would choose something a little finer, a little lighter, and just be a little more delicate in my approach. So the duck lips that we often see, that's really, I mean, some people like that, but that's not your thing from that's what I'm That's not my thing. That's not my style. I'm very, uh, I'm all about making the patient look natural and uh, just a younger version of themselves, not different. You don't want to make anyone look different. Absolutely. And then since we're around the lip area, what about those smoker lines or those lines that people get those right above their lips between their nose? Sure, we can uh, inject um, those lines with a very fine filler as well. Very superficial injection. Um, Botox can go there as well, just to kind of relax that muscle. Um, another really hot trend right now is a jawline contouring and definition. People really like that. Uh, definitely pulls some of those, you know, some of that skin back, preventing the jowls from forming. And um, it just, it's, it's amazing. It's, um, it's a must, in my opinion. People should not, you know, fear it and, um, and definitely start earlier rather than later. Prevent it, prevention is, is easier, always. Absolutely. So look, I agree with you. I think people should not fear it. But on the same token, I will caution that in order not to fear it, you have to get really good results. And in order to get really good results, you have to be see somebody who's really experienced and good. So be careful who you choose, do your homework, make sure they have been in aesthetics for a long time, they feel comfortable doing injectables. <clears throat> and I think you'll have a really positive outcome. Since we're around the lower mid, low, the lower face, it just popped into my head. What about, you know, when people strain, they get sometimes these bulging neck veins or these neck bands that pop up. Can you do something about those? Yes, we do Botox for those. And that just really uh, relaxes those muscles, those bands where, you know, to the point where you just don't even see them. That one's great too. And as far as making sure to go to, to the right injector, you know, I always like to say, when you go to your, an injector, if, if they look crazy, <laughs> that's probably what they're gonna make you look like, so. Right, they look very fake and injected. <laughs> that's probably your look. So that's great. But so once we've gotten your face looking really young and rejuvenated and back to your old self, the problem is some of the other giveaways are your hands. Because as we get older, we tend to start really seeing an aging, aging process occurring in hands. Can fillers be used in the hands to, to give it a more youthful look? Absolutely. And we definitely want to match your hands to your face. So uh, the hands do tell a, a woman's age a lot of times. And uh, what we've done is uh, some 
um, either Restyl and Lift or ADS. Those, those are just a couple of uh, common fillers that I have used for the hands and it just, it's, a, it's beautiful. It looks what, night and day when you look at the befores and afters. So nice. <clears throat> so aside, so any other hot treatments right now, since you practice in Los Angeles and you're with all the movie stars and part of Hollywood, anything going on that's trending that we're going to start seeing down the pipeline for the rest of us? Honestly, uh, cheek lift and contouring, uh, jawline definition, those are huge. Those are really big. And those can all be done at the same time? Yes, absolutely. I have injected, uh, you know, five to seven syringes at one time in one seating for one patient. Wow. And, um, and again, it depends on, on the patient's age. It depends on whether or not they've had filler before. Uh, there's so many factors that come into play. Um, everyone's age, you know, and, and face is different. And uh, just like medication, you, you need to make sure you get the right amount, right dose for you. Yeah. Well, look, everyone, I think that when you're talking about aesthetics and rejuvenation, you have to talk about fillers and neurotoxins because they're such an important element to making that happen and become realistic. So I'm, I'm really happy Emily shared with us some of her wisdom and, and knowledge, but I also want to share and bring up, I want to bring up some, a couple updates. Number one, I'm super excited to say that Emily has joined our practice. We're going to start part-time initially, but she's going to come on full-time soon enough. She's an amazing injector. So if anybody is interested um, you can easily call the office 310-393-9359. But I also want to tell you guys that we are going to do a social media event um, on a weekly basis starting mid-November till December. And once a week, we're going to pick a topic and we're going to discuss it and do some demonstrations. So the first one that Emily is actually going to do is injectables, both Botox and fillers. And she's going to demonstrate live on social media, on Instagram, how she performs Botox and some really nice filler um, treatments that she does. We're going to give some giveaways that day. So make sure you, you stay tuned. And then we're going to have some special discounts for people who actually log in. So if you're not aware, log in to our Instagram account at David Goslin MD. That's the handle for my Instagram. Emily, what's yours? Uh, mine is cosmetic.np, and um, I also just want to say that I've been very fortunate to have found you and your staff, um, and also for everyone out there to know that we have a large supply of all the latest injectables for the face, neck, um, and hands for optimal results. It's like a candy store of, uh, of injectables. So. I love it, candy store, so you come out looking sweeter. Exactly. <laughs> All right, Emily, I want to thank you. Thank everyone today. You know, unfortunately, these, these past few months, I've been doing all of these virtually because of the pandemic. So I wanted to wish happy voting day. Everyone's voting today. So good luck to the, our next president. And uh, I appreciate you being on the show, Emily. So thank come and you. see us in the office, everyone. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of Women's Health and Beyond with Dr. David Goslin. If you found this episode informative, be sure to subscribe to our show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. If you'd like to ask Dr. Goslin a question, please visit our website at www.davidgoslin.com or connect on all social media platforms at David Goslin. We'll see you next week for another episode.